So we're back on to the Rasul Vintage set. So big thanks to everybody who left some comments about the history of this. Uh, a lot of good information that was given out. So just to summarize, the general consensus is, is this is actually a World War II era set uh, that was used by the German Army. And I especially left a comment that somebody left about a, uh, a, a BMW motorcycle that their father found. And it had this, uh, this set with the motorcycle. So that must have been a very interesting story. So it looks like this little piece definitely doesn't go with the set. Big thanks to the viewer who left the link. Looks like it was made by some company up in uh, Pennsylvania or Ohio. And this was part of another set that had like a couple different sizes. So not really sure what we should do with this. I'll probably just try to clean it up and put it in the drawer. So in terms of what is missing with this set, uh, from the research that people provided, it looks like what was provided with the set was so a 4 through 14 inclusive of these 2209 obstruction open end wrenches. And so the ones I actually have are the 4 through 7. I'm missing the 8. I have the 9. I think I'm missing the 10, the 11. I have the 12, and I'm missing 13, 14. So I'll have to keep an eye out on, see if I can find some of these loose, because these do come up occasionally. And the same thing with the sockets, there should have been a 4 through 14. And it looks like I have a 5, a 7, an 11, and a 12. And it did also come with, the, this actually is an extension. And somebody did leave a comment that it might have came with some hex keys as well, but I haven't seen any of the sets out there that have hex keys in them. So it's possible, but I just haven't seen them. And then this T-bar. So it looks like every, all these parts in the set start with the have a model number that starts with 7 for the socket based stuff. So all the sockets will be a 775. If you ever see a, a Rasul set with a 7 in front of it, that denotes that it goes with this 516s or 8mm drive set. This model is the 755-130 and this is the 758. Well it looks like somebody had a go at hammering that, doesn't it? As for the ratchet, I did start to actually a little bit of oil on it just to see what kind of condition it was in. It's actually not too bad really at all. Uh, nobody really left a comment about how to get this apart. So since it does still work, I'm probably going to keep it. I think there might be a broken tooth in here. So it does feel kind of loose on a couple of these teeth. And it might be where this little broken edge was. Somebody put too much force on it. But I don't hear anything rattling around in there. So I think it'll be okay as long as we just oil it. So what I did do is I soaked this piece um, this drive and some three-in-one oil overnight so because there was quite a bit of rust I think the first thing that we're gonna do is um, there is just a tiny bit of corrosion on a couple of these parts so I'm gonna give it a little bit of a vapor rust for a couple hours we'll just give that a couple of hours with any of the surface rust that was on there. Okay, so let's take a look and see what soaking this and brain one did overnight. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I'm not gonna go crazy with this restoration. I'm not gonna I'm gonna try to keep as much of that patina on there as I can. So as for the ratchet, you can definitely see here this was a well used ratchet at one time. These are just kind of wear marks from people using it. And it looks like it was pre taken pretty good care of. I don't see any hammer marks on the edges. Very little rust on it. There's a rust spot right here. There's a little bit of rust down in the lettering here. But other than that, it looks pretty good. So we'll go ahead and put this in the evaporust solution as well. Uh, just to give it, just to get this little spot off. And then we're going to soak this in 3-in-1 oil to help clean up the mechanism here since we're since I don't think I'm going to take that apart I'm, I'm too afraid that if I if I try to press that out it's actually going to break it and you're never going to find a replacement part piece you basically would have to get a machinist to make you one but I'm pretty sure it's just a press fit so if I heated it up and then put it in a press I probably could get it out but because of this little 
damage right here probably would snap this piece off. So we'll go ahead and throw that in here along with these other pieces. All right, so now onto this case. So, so the rust really isn't too bad in here. Really just on the bottom. And it looks like it was actually just spot welded, these pieces. But really all it needs is just a good cleaning. Um, so all I'm doing here is just putting a little bit of polystyl on the, uh, just to clean off the grime. Just get an idea of what's underneath there. So it does look like there's actually quite a bit of paint still left in there. You just couldn't see it before because it was so darkened. As you can see there. So that's actually it's actually coming up pretty nicely. A lot nicer than I thought it was gonna be. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and try to use this ball still to actually scrub most of this down and we'll see what kind of condition it's in, see if what kind of case restoration we need to, to do. Alright, so I basically scrubbed this out just to get all the gunk out of it, all the dirt. And I think I am just going to keep the original paint, um, original finish here. Because it's not horrible yet, yeah, it is flaking off. There is something about keeping something as original paint. And the top really didn't look as bad. A lot of that yellow there is still in there, so... We'll go ahead and keep this. Um, but yeah, you can definitely see the that German Army green coming out now. And I basically just used oil on all the... Uh, all the exposed surfaces that should help prevent any additional rust. But if it does start rusting more, I may have to act, end up painting it. And then we'll just add a couple drops of 3-in-1 oil to these hinges. But yeah, those hinges are in remarkably good condition for being over 60, 70 years old. Now that we've had some uh, another hour or so, let's go ahead and take these out of the evapo rust solution. Something I did do last time after I shot the camera, I moved this piece, and you can see there it actually left a dark spot where that was. So I'm not sure if that's even going to come out. So what we'll go ahead and just do is just remove all these real quick. So we can put the solution back in the can. And of course you can reuse this stuff pretty much. I pretty much reuse this stuff until it goes black, but other people have used it even further than that. So depending on how bad these are, sometimes you actually have to use like a wire brush to scrub them off, but I'd rather not do that with these older pieces. Basically just using a paper towel. Or you can just use a microfiber rag here. And I think what I'm going to do for the wrench head here, I think I'm actually going to soak this in some 3-in-1 oil. Also for a couple of hours. Um, just to kind of lubricate every, all that, that mechanism. Put a little bit of 3 more oil on this guy too. And then to oil all these, I just use some of this Ballistol tool oil. And this step isn't totally necessary because actually the Evaporus actually adds a protective layer um, to the metal. It looks like somebody took a pair of pliers to that one at one time. So that's the uh, seven millimeter. So this one right here is actually quite interesting. It looks like the guy who was making it accidentally stamped a six there. Um, 
and then was like, oops, got out a seven stamp and stamped the seven right on top of it. So this is a seven, I did measure it. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the wrench again. Yeah, that thing was definitely pretty gunked up. If you want to see a little demonstration of this, just to show you it still works. This is just going to use this as an 8mm hex drive. Yeah, it's definitely not the tightest ratchet in the world, but it still works even after 70 plus years. So this might be interesting to some people. If you look down in that socket, look at all the wear down in there. So I'm guessing that's just wear, not some kind of manufacturing defect. But yeah, this this socket definitely got some use at some time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that look at that uh, vintage Rasul kit. So I would call this more of a conservative restoration. I really didn't go hardcore on stripping the paint off or the finish off of these because they actually are in not too bad a condition considering their age. But I'll have to keep you guys apprised if, uh, if I find the rest of the set or if I ever complete it. But catch you guys next time.